Hey y'all, Adam here with another Lightroom video for pixelatedphotographer.com. This time we're going to take a little closer look at the library module. Uh, I would say that almost 100% of my time is, is divided between the library module and the develop module. So there's a lot of good stuff in here that we can go through. Uh, on the left hand side, this isn't necessarily specific to the library module. These these panels, the left, the right, even the bottom, uh, are going to show up in all the various panels, but they have different functions depending on which section you're in. So this top part here has got a little navigator. This is a thumbnail view. This is a little more useful when you get to the develop uh, module. Next part is the catalog. And th this can lead to some confusion for some people depending on uh, if you've ever used a system like this before. But the way Lightroom manages your photos is via catalogs. And how I visualize this is to think of a catalog as sort of the file cabinet. So you can have as many file cabinets as you want, and inside those file cabinets are where you keep the photos. The key thing to remember is that once you add a photo to one catalog, you can't have it in another catalog also. Photos can only be in one catalog or one, quote, file cabinet at a time. Um, right now you can see in this one I have about 1,750. I started this at the end of 2010. You can have as many catalogs as you want. So I know people say, uh, some people say that they have a different catalog that they do for each photo shoot or each event. Some people do it by month. Uh, I personally like to do mine by year. Uh, the folks at Adobe say that you can have upwards to 100,000 plus images in a catalog and, and it, you won't have any performance issues. I have one catalog, the very first one. Uh, that I started which has got like 75,000 pictures and I've never had a problem with it slowing down or anything like that. So to switch is easy enough. You just go up here, you can do open catalog, uh, open recent a little easier. You can see I'm in 2010, we can select 2011 or this Lightroom 3 is the default one that it started uh, for me the very first time I uh, loaded up Lightroom. And when you switch, Lightroom will restart and you have your new, your new photos uh, showing there. Uh, right below uh, the catalog here you can see we can select all photographs in the catalog you can show quick collection which is easy enough you just right click you can add to uh, quick collection right here via this menu there's also a shortcut key if you want to just add stuff to it we'll get to uh, collections a little more down here previous import this is where it defaults to the last photos that you imported it'll show you these um, you can click on there the next one is the f uh, folders <coughs> excuse me on the top here, you have the option to just add a folder. You can click on it, it'll open up, it'll let you navigate. This is another way to add photos to Lightroom. Uh, instead, before we went through the import button, uh, this way you can just click on the folder, it'll add it, and you can see they show up up here. Here's two folders that I've added. I have one with all the pictures of uh, I've taken of the kid. <clears throat> And uh, you know, I can just click on there. Here's another one that's on my desktop. It'll just show me those folders. Below that, these are the folders that I've imported using the import button. Uh, we talked about before, on the import side, you can select, uh, name the folder, and all that sort of stuff. They also show up here. So I can show my previous import, which would be these, um, what do we got there, six images. I can also go down here and show the same ones just by clicking on there. There's yesterday, as this is today and I can see the pictures uh, right there. Below that, and you can close these panels independently so it doesn't get too confusing. Below that are collections. Collections are really uh, really kind of a neat feature in uh, Lightroom. You can click the plus, you can create a collection, which is nothing more than you naming a folder and selecting images to go into it. I, I kind of think of it similar to, if you use iTunes, it's similar to a playlist. You just select the pictures, you can drag them over, you can do whatever you want to select your collection. Uh, you can also create what are called smart collections which are uh, similar to iTunes smart playlists which where you can go in and say I want, uh, you can give it a name, <clears throat> you can select any of these parameters say just show me show me pictures just from this camera, show me pictures that only have this aperture or ISO or anything like that and it'll go through and pick all them out so you can quickly quickly uh, get to the pictures you want. There's about a billion different ways that you can sort and label your photos within Lightroom. Quick collections and collections are just another way to do it. Uh, kind of a handy feature. What I like to do with it is once I'm done sorting my images 
and I pick out my very best ones, I make those into a collection. So that way, if I ever want, you know, the best pictures from such and such birthday party, I already have a collection picked out. I don't have to navigate to the folder and then look at, at maybe some of the other options that you can use to, to sort them out. The very bottom one here is published services. That's probably uh, big enough for its own video later down the road, but you can have several options there to export pictures. Um, to a certain service if you want. Moving on to the middle part here, this is where we again we can see all our pictures. I'm going to switch to this one so we have a little bit more. <clears throat> uh, across the top when I was saying we, you could sort pictures different ways, there's a flag system where you can flag it on, on uh, uh, flagged, unflagged, and rejected. The neat thing about rejected is if you ever, uh, once you sort through them, you can go up to this photo menu and say delete rejected photos and you have an option just to go through and remove them. Typically what I do is when I load up brand new images I use the keyboard and the keyboard shortcuts to cycle through the images and as I look at them you can hit the letter X and flag them as rejected which is kinda nice. Other options on here are star rating. You can give them stars, five, four, three, whatever you want. Uh, typically I only use uh, like a five star rating or a four star you could say you know four stars are, are my keepers five stars are my favorites things like that you can also select a color on this side and again there's shortcut keys for all of this which is really handy for the stars it's the numbers one two three four and five for the uh, colors it just continues on six seven eight and so on um, you can rotate the photos right there another cool feature up here there's a filter and you can um, sort these images via all sorts of different attributes. Right here is text if you had keywords labeled in there. Attribute, you can see the flags, the star rating, and you say just show me all the images that are five stars and the color green or blue or whatever you might um, do it. Metadata is really useful. Some folks have commented, uh, they've seen in the forums where I kind of sort out and say, you know, I had some interesting stats of the type of pictures I've taken and the cool part is you can go in and change these to a lot of different uh, options a again you could say I want show me just uh, photos from a certain camera 7D, 40D, XSI um, so I could say just show me the 7D photos that are using <clears throat> my 24-105 lens and you can keep going with this if you want to and you could say I want to see only the ones that are a certain aperture Show me all the ones that are f5.6, and you can pick another one if you want. You can pick a date, which is kind of handy. Um, uh, ISO speed, different things like that. And it helps you sort and kind of narrow things down if you're looking for a specific image. And then, of course, none does not nothing. There's a, a little padlock over here. You use that because once you change from this folder and you go back, all of this gets erased unless you click that little padlock to make it stay. Uh, along the bottom, uh, we kind of talked about this in the overview part of it, but there's different views to the center, um, the center library panel. Right now is a grid view, which again you can uh, make the thumbnails bigger and smaller over here. There is a loop view, which makes the picture uh, just a single picture bigger. There's the compare, and then there is the uh, what they call a survey. So if I go in here, <coughs> excuse me, and pick a couple of different images. Uh, especially some of these that are real similar and I can say you know here's this one and I want to see it in the loop view give me a little bit bigger view of it you can also click you double click it'll go into loop view double click you get back out if I have more than one I can go into the uh, oop, I can go into the compare one here it'll show me two and I can select different flag status star ratings color or I can just remove it from there and it'll bring up the next one if I had multiple ones selected you can also go in here, we'll say we picked a whole bunch of them. We'll pick all of these moonshots here. And I'm going to go into the survey mode. And it's going to show me all of them on the same screen, which is not quite as useful when you have a lot of images. But you only if you only had, say, uh, we'll do four images in the survey. Now I get all four in here. And again, you can close them out and say, okay, now just show me these three. I like this one better. And you narrow it down that way. It's a nice way to look at them. Uh, the very last part on the right hand side here you get a histogram histogram of the moon shots not all that great <laughs> uh, you can get a nice little histogram it kinda gives you some info on the shot you have option for quick develop 
which uh, presets we'll have to go over another time. You can change all the white balance at once. You can select auto tone or change the exposures. They're kind of real broad stroke um, editing if you wanted to do it that way. Keywords, you can enter your keywords here. You can pick from a list of, a list of suggestions, which is very handy. Um, moving down, we can go to the keyword list, which is just a list of keywords that you've used. Metadata, that's probably enough for a video another time, but there's your metadata. You can cycle through different options there. And the very last one are comments, which is just uh, stuff you can type in. So that is a broad overview of the library panel. We'll come back. We'll look at some more of the stuff in details in another video. Uh, make sure to check out the site. Let us know what you think, pixelatedphotographer.com, and we'll see you next time.